Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Nigel, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about two lenses that I get a lot of questions about actually, and they're actually the two lenses that I probably have used the most on this channel. And the two that we're gonna be talking about are the DJI 15 millimeter f1.7 and the Sigma 16 millimeter contemporary lens, which is an f1.4. Now what you're seeing me on right now is the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, but the lens that I've used probably most often on this channel is this little 15 millimeter f1.7. So what I thought I'd do in this video is kind of go over some of the differences between these two lenses, some of the pros and cons, and show you the differences in field of view, sharpness, and just overall usability and then at the end of this video we'll go over my overall conclusion and hopefully help you decide which one of these lenses is best for you so a little background on both of these lenses the DJI 15 millimeter or Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter f1.7 they're both basically the exact same lens. Panasonic came out with this 15 millimeter Leica collaboration a while ago actually, and DJI I think kind of picked this up as one of the main lenses that they use on their XR gimbals and their Inspire drones. It's a 15 millimeter f1.7 and it has a manual aperture, which is pretty cool, and it gives you about a 30 millimeter equivalent field of view when we're talking full frame terms. As far as the Sigma 16 millimeter, this was one of the first lenses released in their contemporary line. That was for Micro Four Thirds and Sony E-mount. So yeah, this Sigma 16 millimeter contemporary lens is weather sealed and it has an f1.4 aperture. It is much bigger and heavier than the little 15 millimeter by DJI and Panasonic, but I would definitely say that the weight and balance on my Panasonic GH3 feels a lot better and less toy-like than the DJI 15 millimeter. Now, what some of you will probably think is that the 15 millimeter and the 16 millimeter only have a one millimeter difference as far as field of view, which on paper, that's correct. But in practice, it's a little bit more like a two millimeter field of view difference since the 15 millimeter will give you a 30 millimeter equivalent field of view and the 16 will give you a 32 millimeter field of view so this is going to be a little bit wider and the 60 millimeter is going to be obviously a little tighter that's what we're shooting on right now and it's at f1.4 and it's giving me a nice blurry background so before we go out and start shooting with these and doing some field of view comparisons and sharpness and whatnot i'm going to throw this little 15 millimeter up onto my gh3 just so you can see the differences in field of view when we're doing a youtube type setup like this okay so this is the dji 15 millimeter and as you can see this is a f1.7 where i the Sigma was at f1.4, so I'm gonna turn my light up just a little bit so I can get a similar exposure. That looks pretty good. Anyways, yeah, this is the DJI 15 millimeter. As you can see, the field of view is a bit larger and the out of focus areas aren't as pronounced because it is a smaller aperture lens. So you're not gonna get as blurry of a background as you would with the Sigma 16 millimeter. Anyways, this is the lens that I have used on the majority of my videos throughout 2020 and 2019, and I've always liked it. I've always really digged the 15 millimeter field of view. Yeah, now let's go out and shoot with it and I'll give you some more examples between these two lenses. All right, so right now I'm vlogging on the DJI 15 millimeter f1.7. I don't typically do this type of stuff, but I know that a lot of people on the Micro Four Thirds system are looking for a lens that's wide enough that they can hold the camera out in front of them and actually be able to get a nice shallow depth of field with that nice blurry background. So with this DJI 15 millimeter, as you can see, it is possible. I am using a Gorillapod to help get my camera a little bit further away. I don't typically do this stuff, but now let's switch to the Sigma 16 millimeter so you can see what that looks like in comparison. Okay, so now we're on the Sigma 16 millimeter, and this footage is probably gonna be pretty shaky. This is a lot heavier of a lens, so it's not ideal for vlogging, but as you can see, it kind of works, but at the same time, I definitely couldn't do this for a very long extended period of time. Whoa, it's a little overexposed. But yeah, you can do it, but I would definitely say that you would need a Gorillapod in order to extend the camera far enough to where it's not gonna be super tight in this is probably where it would be if I was just holding it with my hands. With the Gorillapod, it's helping me extend it out a little bit more. So, not ideal for vlogging, but you can do it. So, 
Again, if you're more of a walk and talk, holding your camera out type of a vlogger, then this 15 millimeter is probably gonna be the better choice. But if you set up your shots like this and you take your time and you know make sure that you're in frame and you don't need to be holding your camera while you film, then honestly, either of these lenses would work perfectly. This 15 millimeter, again, is a lot lighter and it's gonna be easier to hold out in front of you if it's on your camera. Again, the 16 millimeter is kind of heavy, but I don't ever do those kind of walk and talk style vlogs. So this one is gonna be your better bet if you wanted a vlog style lens with a nice big aperture of 1.7 so you can get that nice blurry background. All right, quick field of view comparison. This is the Sigma 16 millimeter and this is the DJI 15 millimeter. So let's talk about sharpness for a second. And this is one area when it comes to lens testing that I never really understood on really high resolution cameras. I feel like most lenses are gonna look pretty good. So putting two lenses with very negligible sharpness differences head to head against each other doesn't really seem productive to me, but I just wanted to show you my version of a sharpness test and just see if you could even see any sharpness differences because I don't think that you really can. So instead of shooting charts like everybody does, I just shot a mock style interview and I framed the subject up kind of in the middle of the frame because that's usually where the lenses are the sharpest. And if we zoom in a little bit on both of these lenses, you'll notice that they both hold up perfectly fine when it comes to sharpness. Again, I don't think that sharpness is gonna be a determining factor when it comes to picking between these two lenses. They're both very sharp, and if you're shooting on a 4K camera, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference. One nice thing about the Sigma 16 millimeter is that it is weather sealed. As most of you know, I live here in Oregon where it's basically always rainy, except for like three months out of the year. So having a weather sealed lens definitely does come in handy for me. All right, so if you've made it to this part of the video, you're probably wondering, well, which one do I go for, Nigel? Do I go for the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 or the DJI or Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter F1.7? And it's kind of a hard question to answer because I like both of these lenses for different reasons. This one is fast and it's weather sealed and it just feels more like a professional lens. Not that the 15 millimeter f1.7 doesn't feel good and really sturdy. It's just a shorter pancake lens. And so even though I would never do manual focus on either of these lenses, if I had to choose between which lens I would rather manual focus on, I'd rather have a bigger lens with a bigger focus ring because it's a little bit easier to do manual focus that way. And this one just does look better, at least on my Panasonic GH3, if that means anything to you. It probably shouldn't, but if you care about how your rig looks, the Sigma 16 millimeter definitely looks more professional in my opinion than the little pancake 15 millimeter. And as you saw in the sharpness tests, they're not really that different. They're both really sharp lenses. And with the cameras that are out today, if you're shooting 4K, they're both gonna look incredible. So I don't really think you have to worry about the microscopic difference that might be between the 16 and the 15 millimeter. I'm shooting on a Panasonic GH3 and I still think both of these lenses look absolutely absolutely amazing. I currently own both of these lenses and if you had to ask me which one I am going to sell or which one I'm going to keep, I, honestly I don't know. The 15 millimeter is such a great focal length for YouTube stuff but the 16 millimeter just gives me that extra bit of light and it is a weather sealed lens which I said is really beneficial for me here in Oregon so it just kind of depends. I would say that if you are running on a gimbal a lot and you're making a lot of YouTube videos and you don't need something that's weather sealed then the 15 millimeter f1.7 is going to be a great option for you. But if you're doing more run and gun type stuff and you don't care about the slightly wider field of view, then this Sigma 16 millimeter is an absolute great option. So yeah, that was my quick comparison and review. I love them both for different reasons. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna sell one or not, but yeah, I love both of these lenses and they're both an excellent value for the price. So hopefully that helps you a little bit in your decision whether you wanna get the Sigma 16 or the DJI 15. But yeah, if you like this video and if you've made it this far, it'd be really cool if you hit the like button, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, you can click on either side of my face if you wanna check out more of my videos. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you all next time. Later.